Well, yet again, another report of a meteor, this time in Florida. According to the Channel 6 South Florida news website that was published on the 17th of February 2013, it goes on to say that a bright streak lights up night sky across Florida. And then we have Mike Hankey, who is the operation manager for the American Meteor Society, say that it was a sporadic media and it was essentially just a rocky object that comes from the asteroid belt. I have to say that I am really quite saddened at the misinformation and disinformation that we are now receiving from these agencies who are not there to prepare the people but merely there now to allay the fears of the herd and stop any possible panic. Because for me to be able to connect these three days now of meteors being seen across the planet to the last time it happened in February of 1913, but NASA cannot do this, well then I find that to be absolutely criminal. You know, this agency is paid millions of dollars by the American taxpayer to basically have systems in place to protect the people. And what they are doing is basically only protecting their asses because there is a 72 hour suppression order on all near earth objects and that's including dangerous near earth objects. What that means guys is that when NASA spots a dangerous near earth object, they will not relay this information to you for 72 hours unless they are sure that it will not hit our planet. So that means that instead of allowing people time to prepare for what may be coming, they're more interested in basically covering their asses. So if you think that these agencies are there to protect you or warn you, then please do not fall into that trap. Look at this information, take this information and act on this information yourself. Do not wait for the agencies to tell you what's going on because they're quite clearly lying. The first thing that a good researcher does and a good scientist does is when an event like what happened in the uh, city of Russia, Urals, where this meteorite struck the ground and caused this damage and so many injuries, the first thing you would do as a scientist, as a uh, researcher, would be to go back in history and search for any other event that shows the same pattern or that was occurring around the same time. And it seems that Earth Sky can do this and understand that in February of 1913, there was what was known as the Great Meteor Procession in which for several days a procession of huge fireballs were seen streaking across the sky in different places around the planet and also in some instances caused you know rumbling sounds and noises and flashing lights and everything else that we have actually heard being reported in regards to these meteors that we're seeing now and I find that very interesting that NASA does not have access to this information. So please do not think on any way, shape or form that NASA is there to warn you when the next meteorite is going to basically slam into our planet or explode above our planet causing a shock wave and creating a lot of damage due to that. So what I will do is I will link uh, both of these articles under the video, I would very much recommend uh, you read this one because I think it doesn't take a lot of uh, you know, research to see the connections. I've got another video out there showing more connections to 1913 in regards to the sun's activity and how it's also matching the sun's activity that we're experiencing now and also earthquake activity of 1913. There were some large earthquakes, one of them being in South Carolina. So uh, that information is on uh, another video. Uh, please uh, have a look at my uploads. I will attach it actually to 
uh, this video now and then you can uh, see that for yourself. But, uh, you know, please understand that we're not dealing with rocks. There are not rocks coming into our atmosphere. These are objects that are compromised of various different elements. Some of these elements may not even exist on our planet. And what's happening is they're coming in through our atmosphere because the universe is electric. They're interacting electrically. And so this causes them to behave in ways we've never seen before. And so that meteor that looked like it was actually being shot at by a missile was probably, in fact, just the way that that meteor was reacting uh, electrically to the atmosphere as it was coming into and uh, experiencing, you know, these electrical uh, discharges. So we don't really understand what we're dealing with. NASA don't really understand what we're dealing with. And unfortunately, uh, it's very easy to speculate on what we think we're seeing because we don't really understand what we're dealing with. So what we do is we utilize information that we do understand and we try to make sense of what we're seeing. And so a lot of people are speculating that this could be a missile taking out this asteroid. Well, it's not very logical to think that this could be the case because to start with, I mean, you would have to be insane to try and shoot an asteroid down over a town. You know, it just is ridiculous to think that that would do anything but actually explode uh, that meteor sorry, not asteroid, that meteor, and then actually have different pieces of it hitting everywhere that they could not even control. So that's one reason that it's not logical to think that they would shoot a missile at a media that is over a populated area. It just would cause more damage. The other uh, reason I think that uh, we are not dealing with a missile hitting a uh, meteor is because I have not seen a missile hitting a meteor. I've not seen a Russian plane firing a missile hitting uh, a meteor, and nor have I seen this missile. What I saw was some object uh, exploding through uh, a meteor, several other objects that seem to just explode through uh, as well. So, you know, I am not really ready to accept that just on the basis of speculation. And as I said, logically, it does not make sense to me that they would shoot down a meteor over a populated area. That's just ridiculous to think that any government would do that because all you're going to really do is cause more damage over a larger area and therefore they're not really going to be able to hide this from people. So in saying that, the Russians are not like uh, the American agencies. The Russians do not hide all of this information from their people like the American agencies are doing. So we're a lot, um, we're a lot uh, we're, we're very lucky that a lot of the information like this comes from these countries. Anyway, I'll leave it here. And as I said, I will post the uh, articles underneath and you can check them out for yourself. And as always, peace out.